That went well, didn't it? Well, here we are then, the last day in the unit. Another night has passed and I'm in here now. I've got about six hours until I need to drive this car out of here. And I was meant to actually be out yesterday, but I rented the unit for an extra day because I just needed the time. If anyone's interested, this unit cost me 80 pounds a day to rent, which I think is, is very reasonable actually, given well, how private it is, how much space there is, use of the ramp itself or the, the, the lift. I think it's very been very, very good and I'll definitely come here again if I don't get my own unit beforehand. Anyway, my main consideration is getting the wheel back on, um, on, on all of them because at the moment I cannot get the nut that secures the lower control arm to the ball joint, this thing here, I cannot get it to tighten so i've got to try and work that one out and then we can think about getting the wheels back on i've only managed to do one side of the suspension and i've not actually managed to do the anti-roll bars either so all i've actually done is the lower control arm on the passenger side and the ball joint but for a novice for a first timer i'm quite happy we've even managed to do that and that is ultimately the thing that was causing problems with the MOT. We've also done the headlights and I'm pleased to say that overnight they have not sort of gone foggy again. They're looking, I mean, not perfect, but pretty good. I think, again, good enough to get us where we need to. Now, under the bonnet here is the injectors, obviously. You could see that number three was blown. I want to get that sorted today. I had to uh, order a 15 millimeter spanner because of course it was the one size I didn't have and I need that to get the injector out. We've got some number plates to fit. We'll take the GB sticker off, get rid of this number plate, put a new one on, same on the front. And then the only other thing, of course, was the, the ABS. So I'm pretty sure if I turned the car on now, we'd have an ABS light as we did before. And I wasn't able to change the ABS pickup rings. It was just a little step too far in terms of my skill set. And actually I was trying to get the drive shaft to sort of come out from the hub and I ended up hammering straight into it. It was, it was a complete disaster. I'm a little bit worried about if I've done any damage to that. We'll find out when we drive the car. Um, so presumably we're still gonna have ABS lights, but I have got a copy of Vida, which is the Volvo specialist diagnostic software. I've got a copy of that coming. So hopefully between now and the MOT, I'll be able to either have a look, diagnose it, and maybe reset that light if it's nothing serious or at least find out exactly what it is and then maybe get someone else to do it for me. But all in all, this has been just a wild experience for me, completely out of my comfort zone. And I feel like even if this doesn't pay off and the car, the wheel falls off on the way home later, um, I've learned a lot. So <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm telling myself anyway. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed uh, seeing me sort of get stuck in, but also just enjoyed the content in general and, and enjoyed coming along on the journey with me. So let's get cracking, shall we? Well, finally, part four is here. Sorry it's taken a little while, everyone. I decided to take some time off after this endeavor and spent a week pretending to look cool on a beach. This series so far has been incredibly fun. I'm so grateful for all of you watching along and none of these videos would have been possible without my incredible sponsors. So quickly, before we get into it, let me say a quick thanks to today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Let me interrupt really quickly to say a huge thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. And to be honest, they've been an absolute godsend this week while I've been in the garage because, well, I've been out all day, Katie's been at work, and when I get home, very tired, very oily and very sweaty, I just wanna be able to eat nice and quickly. And HelloFresh allows me to do that. On HelloFresh, you can choose from so many different types of meals and they change with different menus every single week. Also, they come with very clearly laid out instructions. So for someone like me and maybe you, that isn't much of a cook, even I can cook up something absolutely delicious. Their meals are healthy, they're delicious, they're always so varied. And the best thing of all, especially for this week, is they're delivered straight to your doorstep. So if you fancy trying HelloFresh yourself, I strongly encourage you to do so. Use the link in my description now to get yourself 60% off your first box and 25% off your next eight boxes thereafter. It's an incredible deal. HelloFresh is a service I'm always going to use now. Thanks so much to them for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the Volvo. 
So first things first then I wanted to get the car back up in the air so I could address the nut at the bottom of the control arm. As you can see here the entire bolt was spinning which means I couldn't secure it in place. You can see my problem here look when I try and screw this on you watch the entire the whole thing spin. I've tried to get some mole grips in there to clamp it but it's it's a bolt so it's just impossible to do that really. Um, I tried and tried to get this screw on, but I just couldn't stop the bolt from spinning. And then I tried something really simple and it worked. Okay, so by the grace of God, I've managed to do it. I've managed to get the control arm secured. Now I've used the bolts that came new with the ball joints. Originally I wasn't uh, using them because they didn't seem to fit, but I was just being stupid. I didn't have the right socket size. I was trying to use the 21 mil when actually it's a 23 on these new ones. And I've got it on. So what I'm gonna do now, cause this is now it's fully done, I've gotta make sure everything's back in place. So I'm just gonna re-talk, recheck the ball joint uh, socket. So these are 13 mils and I think it's 39 Newton meters. So I'm gonna just go ahead and torque them up to 40. So I torqued up the bolts holding the ball joint in place to 40 Newton meters using my torque wrench, which hopefully still had some degree of accuracy after many of you had seen me trying to use it as a breaker bar. Lesson learned. Then the two 17 millimeter bolts securing the control arm to the subframe itself needed torquing to 60 Newton meters. This was easier said than done. And then finally, the nut that I was struggling so much with earlier needed to be tightened up to 90 Newton meters. So that's good. So that's the ball joint in, control arm at the bottom is in. We've snugged up these 15 mils at the back. Sorry, they're 17 mils. I get so confused. All right, so that is one complete passenger side suspension, well, control arm and ball joint all talked up. I'm very happy with that. Obviously, we didn't get onto the anti-roll bar. To be honest, I could probably do that, given that I've still got about five hours in here, but I just don't want to risk running into problems and then, you know, being in, in trouble. While the car is jacked up and at this height, we're going to, I'm going to just take the front number plate off. There we go. <laughs> and uh, stick a new one on. So ripping the front plate off like that wasn't my smartest move ever, but I still cleaned up the surface nicely for a new plate. Then using the old number plate as a reference, I drilled with my impact driver, I drilled holes into the new number plate. I did intend on sticking the new plates on rather than drilling, but annoyingly the company I ordered the plates from didn't send the three M strips that I'd ordered. With the front plate on, I lowered the car to make it easier to access the rear number plate and learning from my mistake, this time I unscrewed the plate instead of ripping it off like some crazy ape. I cleaned the surface like I did with the front plate, although that GB sticker was extremely stubborn and wouldn't completely come off. That must have been on there for years. Time then to screw in the new plate, which of course was completely straightforward. That went well, didn't it? Sake. After some perseverance, I got the new number plate onto the back of the car, although I have to admit it wasn't my finest work. Number plates on then, sort of, at the front then. Looks lovely, especially with the nice clean headlights. Did a bit of a bodge job at the back, I'm not going to lie, I absolutely ruined the plate. Can you see that? Screw in there. <laughs> Basically, I, I just did it wrong. I drilled it wrong, got the holes in the wrong place, ended up with a complete bodge job and some of them don't actually hold it properly. So I've put four in to hopefully keep it in place. Also, I'm gonna need something a little bit stronger to get this rest of this GB sticker off unless I wanna scratch the paintwork, which I don't really. So let's just give this a quick wipe down. Now that it, I think, is on, I think. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is the fuel injector. I've got a few hours left, so I'm gonna get the engine started right now. I'm gonna see if it starts, actually, that'll be interesting. Um, and then I'm gonna put the wheels on, actually, and probably do this on the ground. 
change my mind. I'm just gonna try and do it like this. So let's pop the engine on. Yes. We'll let that run up to temperature. And then, where are we? We'll try and take the fuel injector out. Just checking the uh, ramp or the lift is on the lowest setting, which it is. It's nice to see actually the projection of the lights is a lot stronger now that they're clean, which is good. Ah, good. I switched the car on to warm everything up, which supposedly should make the injector easier to remove. In the meantime, I got a rag and cleaned what I could of the excess spillage and then switched the car off, ready for removal. Okay, well, if I was a betting man, I would uh, wage that this isn't gonna come out without a bit of a fight or maybe not even at all. So as far as I'm aware, we've got this 15 mil here, which we've got to pull out but it will help if we leverage it lower down with this 13 mil. So we've used the 15 mil spanner here to loosen this off and separate the injector from this line. Then I've pulled out the clip, which means I should be able to pull this off, but I'm not quite sure. I think it would essentially just mean we can break the injector free. And then I've just got to pull out this at the back. There we go. And then hopefully the injector should essentially now come loose. Hey, we got it. Hello, naughty fuel injector. So apparently this one was blowing. I don't quite understand what that means, but what you can see is uh, the area around where the fuel injector sits up the top here is extremely wet and full of diesel. So what I'm gonna do now is try my best to give it a clean. Now, I know what you're meant to do is get down in there with some carburetor cleaner and clean out the actual, the hole itself, but I don't have any carburetor cleaner, but I will do my best to uh, stick a sort of snub nose long screwdriver in there and uh, stick a rag around the edge and, and try and give it a good old clean. So let's give that a go, shall we? So to be honest with you, I was pretty surprised at how easily the old injector came out. I was fully expecting to not even be able to remove it. I did my best with the rag on the end of a long nose screwdriver to clean the area for the new injector. Okay, well, I think I've done my best with this one, so. I'm going to put in the new injector. Hopefully it will make some sort of difference. We'll see, won't we? The engine sounds a little bit, chuka chuka chuka, a little bit more like a tractor than it should, I think. Um, so it, I think it, if this does anything, it will be noticeable. So this should go in this way like this. That's it all the way down. Let's pull it back up, clear off. The residue, all of the uh, other injectors have the number two on them. And the one I'm putting in has the number one, which is a little bit odd, but I'm gonna just go for it nonetheless and see what happens. So I seated the new injector, took it out, cleaned it several times before, in reverse order, putting it back in place. It's pretty straightforward. You just seat the injector as best as you can. There's a couple of eight millimeter bolts that secure it in place. Then you have to attach the fuel rail, which just clips on when you push it down, the sensor at the back of the injector, and then the fuel line, which is secured with that 15 millimeter spanner. Uh, let's see if the car starts, shall we? So let's go put the battery back on. Hopefully the car starts. If the car doesn't start, that'll be really annoying, but uh, hopefully it starts. And then as an extra, it will be running a bit better too. If it is running a bit better, then we can think about um, doing some diesel injector cleaner and uh, hopefully improving the car that way too. Start the engine, shall we? Oh, I'm so nervous. Please start. What's that beeping 
sound. Okay, well, when it started, it was definitely rough, like it was running on not all five cylinders. But now the revs seem very, uh, very stable. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know, I'm gonna look it up whether that's normal or I've done something wrong. Okay, so bear with me. At this point at the end of a long four day binge, I really just wanted to take the car over the line and so I neglected to record most of what happened next. The car just didn't sound right to me when I started it. It sounded a little bit rough, but then when it smoothed out, I could hear a sort of ch -ch -ch sound coming from the new injector that I fit, which I didn't think was great. After doing some research, which in hindsight, I probably should have studied more thoroughly before attempting this job, it seems that with these Volvos, a new fuel injector has to be coded using the Vida software. So as the car was actually now sounding worse, I decided off camera to quickly take out the new fuel injector and replace it with the old one that I'd just taken out before. It was getting late in the day now, so I just wanted to get it put back together as possible so that I could hopefully drive this car out. the end of a very very educational week for me I've just taken the car around a few runs on this private estate here and nothing's fallen off I've just rechecked the lug nuts and they're all still talked up to spec um, it seems to be a little bit better on the tracking as well but I'm sure that's to do with the new wheels they'll be they'll be balanced differently and also the uh, new control arm um, in terms of the MOT itself it's gonna fail if I took it there right now, because the ABS light is still on. However, uh, I'm gonna try and get a copy of Vida in the next couple of days before it goes for its MOT and get that cleared before then. But we'll see, nonetheless, if it fails the MOT, that's fine, we'll take it from there. But it's been a massive learning experience. I have learned so much and we'll take it forward. And if it passes, great, but we'll wait and see. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this series. I hope you found it very exciting and I'll see you very soon for the uh, judgment day on the XC90, whether we can get an MOT on it or not. Thank you all, see you next time. Well, I don't even know what to say other than thank you all so much for watching these videos so far. This was incredibly out of my depth in terms of my knowledge and skill set, but I feel like this has paid off. Even if we've only completed barely half of the items that I originally planned to undertake. The value of the experience and everything I've learned during this process far outweighs that job sheet. My ideal and initial plan was to take the car straight away for an MOT at the end of the week and get it through. However, as we know, we've still got the ABS light and I believe it would probably still fail from the emissions as we still have that blown intercooler and the injector. However, I have now got a copy of Vida, so maybe I could do some diagnosis at home before taking it for an MOT. If you are interested in seeing me do that or anything else with this Volvo, do please let me know now in the comments as I've got plenty of other content to put out, but I know you guys are enjoying the stuff with this Volvo at the moment. Moreover, if you are someone that knows these cars or you're a mechanic or you even are a Volvo specialist and want to help me get this thing over the line, I would love it if you could get in touch. I'll leave my email in the description of this video. To be totally honest, even if I get this thing through the MOT, I would still want an expert or professional 
to actually have a look at the car before I did any sort of mileage in it. How cool would it be if I could partner up with one of you and ultimately, I don't know, drive this car to Sweden? I would love to do some crazy big things with this car, but I'm gonna need your help. So do please get in touch. Once again, thank you all so much for watching these videos. It was a massive risk doing this and I'm so glad that I took it and even happier that you've all enjoyed it. As I said, comment below what you'd like to see next and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Goodbye.